The Film Crickets are intended for mature audiences. Any guests on the Film Crickets do not necessarily share the same opinions as the Film Crickets. It's time for the Film Crickets with Jay Fortier, Chris Martineau, and Melanie Howerton. On this week's episode, we say goodbye to October and put all of our skeletons back into the closet. No, 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 no. We, we put them back into the closet. Anyways, no, no. We start the month of November by reviewing the 1993 American action thriller film, The Fugitive. Hmm. Does it stand the test of time? Let's find out your film crickets are on now. All right. Welcome, friends. My name is Jay Fortier, and I'm along with my good friend, Chris Martineau. How you doing, buddy? Hello, Jason. Long time no see. What's happening? Hey, I know. It's been a long time. I'm giving um, up the producer's seat. <laughs> you can have it. Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> Weird feeling. Um, and uh, welcome along with my good friend and co-host, Melanie Howerton. How are you doing, Melanie? Good. How are you guys doing today? Super. Doing well. Um, Super. This is the Film Crickets, everybody. I forgot to mention that. Uh, we do a podcast from reviewing movies from 1980 to 1999 and seeing how well they hold up today. So today we are talking about The Fugitive. Um <clears throat> You know, um, so it's being recorded actually a couple of days before Halloween, and last week uh, nobody could make it. Like you know, mm -hmm. even I was trying to like I was the only person. Maybe I was like, well, maybe I'll see if I can get somebody. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> it was like you know the freaking ghost yeah, town sound. Yeah. You know, I was like, hello, <laughs> is there anybody out there? All the all the guests are dust in the wind. All the yeah, are dust in the wind. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, so it's like we couldn't do a final um, official horror. So we, uh, I had the movie Twister that we had recorded in um, August, but then again, we started to do like a early Halloween roll with like mm -hmm. uh, The Conjuring and like started yeah. doing that. So um, mm -hmm. I sort of kept Twister aside. And I was like, well, I'll just release it a little later. And then sure enough, like I was like, okay, we don't have a show. Mm -hmm. Here you go, everybody. Twister. Enjoy. A real horror yeah. story yeah. <laughs> about no, I mean like you know, like something from the sky that could mm -hmm. suck up the barn and the right, house. Right, 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 right. And, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and um, and we love having Elizabeth on, and we're gonna have her back in the future in January, I believe. So that'll be exciting. In the future, yeah. In the future, they'll be flying cars, right? And the and the woman from movies with mom in the future will be taking <laughs> vitamins for our meals. <laughs> um, so but yeah, let's the talk future, about this. Like, Talk about the past. Yeah. Um, and I feel as though I'm running from the past. And that's why this is the fugitive. Thought about a segue. I am the master mm -hmm. of the segue. Um, so, guys, we saw, we watched The Fugitive. And, you know, what's weird is I was just thinking about this movie the other week. Yeah. I was going to ask my wife, uh, have you ever seen The Fugitive? And uh, everybody kind of has. I mean, it, it went through this phase where everybody saw The Fugitive and was yeah. really into The Fugitive. Yeah. And um, we were gonna, I was going to watch it anyway, and then it got brought up. I'm like, this is super. Let's watch The Fugitive. Um, mm -hmm. So I do remember this succinctly back in 1994, everybody just discovered Tommy Lee Jones and was we were all collectively falling in love with his candor, mm -hmm. uh, which bled right into Men in Black. Um, different character, but kind of the same. I think the world had kind of the fugitive fever a little bit. My mother loved this movie. My grandmother loved this movie. Keep in mind that Harrison Ford was my grandmother's boyfriend. He doesn't know that, but um, <laughs> she would say that all the time. To my grandfather, uh, Harrison Ford, my boyfriend. But the fact of the matter is, uh, this movie has a history, and I'd like to know where you guys sit with The Fugitive. Like, did you see it in the theater? Did you have a VHS copy? What was your What's your deal? Jay, I'll start with you. What's your, what's your deal with The Fugitive? Um, I think I just uh, rented it. Um, okay. I don't think it was on the theater. I really wanted to see it, but it was just one of those things you see at home. And um, I really, really uh, enjoyed it from the jump. It was, mm -hmm. you know, like it was one of those movies that get rolling right away and it doesn't take long. And nope. it, um, it was just extremely entertaining. We'll get, we'll cover all that. But like I've yep. seen it many times over the years. I can't 
say how long. And uh, I don't know, maybe like five or ten years ago uh, before this one. Cool. You know, like as All far right. as time prior. All right, so uh, uh, Melanie, you must own this, I imagine, because it seems like you own all the films that we have seen. So we'll just I, move on. I don't, oh, and I don't know why, because I love this movie. I, I maybe okay. I never thought that I needed to own it because it's on TV constantly, mm -hmm. um, all the time. Um, so I think I, I can't remember. Like a lot of times, you ask this, I can't remember if I've seen it in the movies or not. Sometimes okay. I can remember, but most of the time I can't. Well, um, it was 1994. It's not. It was last millennium, yeah. so it's not okay. Everybody, if it don't, not everyone has remember. my memory. <laughs> Yeah, not everybody yeah. has mine. You know, Jay, like mine's you always little... remember. You're like, I remember very well. I was at the movie theater, and I'm like, what? Like, I yeah, believe it, it was snowing, that's, that's, and it was in I, uh, it was exactly. March. I, I, I left renting with, this. At, I, left, uh, you know. I left with a butter stain. Yes. Yeah. 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 I remember what kind of candy I ordered that day. Yeah. You know. Uh, no, I don't know. Um, I just know that I've seen it a thousand times, and it, 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 you can't pass it on the TV and not stop and watch it. Like mm -hmm. even like even this like when we were said we were gonna do this. I said you know what? I don't even need to watch this. I don't mm -hmm. need to watch it. I know it by heart. I don't need to watch any of it. And then I was like, I'll just put it on in the background just so that it's just there. And then I'm like, <laughs> like yeah. I have to just sit and I have to watch it mm -hmm. again because it's just so good. You know, it does but draw you in. It does, it, but yep. it totally draws you in. But I I must say I never finished it. I just kind of skipped around through it. And mm -hmm. then I was like, I'm just going to go do the trivia. It's going to remind me of everything anyway. And then I'm looking at a lot of the quotes that I love from this movie right now. Uh, that's what I was doing. So um, certain things that I always remember them saying, you know, mm -hmm. like two of my favorite quotes I'll just say now is like when he was like, I don't get it. If they can dye the river green three, um, you know, today, why can't they dye it blue the, the rest of the 364 days of the year, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I always remember Tommy Lee Jones when he walks into the apartment that it, Harrison Ford was staying in. He goes, oh, look. He goes, we're eating oranges and we're making IDs. Mm -hmm. Like, those are my, I don't know. I just always remember those two all the time. I have a couple so, of yeah, don't, I, I, I've seen it, like, forever. I just don't remember exactly when and, you know. Sure. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fair. I know I saw this in the theater. Um, no doubt about it. The, uh, the person I was dating at the time was, we had gone to dinner, then we went to go see the fugitive and then she was really, really sick. And then we had to go to the emergency room cause she had oh like, my God. no, wow. it's just like coughing, 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 coughing. Maybe we should go to the emergency room. So, um, that was that. So I remember that specifically. So I did not yeah. walk out with a butter stain on my shirt as Jay just said, but I do remember that specifically. Um, and then I know that my grandmother bought an actual copy of the VHS. Uh, was not need to be dubbed for whatever reason. You know, she didn't dub everything. Every now and then she bought the original. Probably because, she was her boyfriend. Harrison Ford. Probably because Harrison Ford was on Your the cover. Your boyfriend was in it, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, support Harrison because he's, <laughs> you know, he's really scrimping by these days. He never acts anymore. <laughs> so anyhow, so uh, I know I've seen it and I know I watched it a few times. I haven't seen it in a long, long time. And I was excited to see it because I know it definitely has a 90s vibe to it as mm -hmm. a 90s thriller. And uh, it does not disappoint. So let's get into it, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about what the high aspects of the uh, fugitive here. So, as we just mentioned, the fugitive uh, came out in 1993. It's PG-13. Uh, comes in at two hours and ten minutes. Uh, the one apps, the one sentence synopsis is: Doctor Richard Kimball, unjustly accused of murdering his wife, must find the real killer while being the target of a nationwide manhunt led by a seasoned, yeah, seasoned, no doubt, uh, U.S. Marshal, directed by Andrew Davis. Written by Jeb Stewart, not Confederate General Jeb Stewart, another Jeb Stewart. Uh, David, whose last name I cannot say, Twohe, and Roy Huggins, starring Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones, Sella Ward, Julianne Moore, who does not deserve fourth billing. He was in it for five minutes. Uh, Joey Pants, Joe Pantoliano. I, I love Joe Pantoliano. Um, Dr. Charles Nichols. It was so funny, and this is the guy that is really behind the scenes of who murdered Dr. Kimball's wife. Surprisingly, when you look at his IMDb, um, uh, uh, the actor page on IMDb, it, it shows him in a Nazi uniform. Shocker. Uh, never would have pegged they would have played a Nazi uh, back in the day. It very, seems very austere and very stern. <laughs> and one last thing, um, only because I knew the voice, uh, but I could not picture her, was L. Scott Caldwell, who plays Poole in this, the African-American uh, U.S. Marshal. And I recognized the voice and I couldn't play it, but she was on my favorite show, Lost. She played Rose on Lost. And uh, can't, I have to bring up Lost whenever I can because people should watch Lost. So anyhow, so we're talking The Fugitive. And so let's, let's, uh, let's talk about um, the real MVP here. 
Uh, the real MVP, I think, of this movie is not Tommy Lee Jones, nor is it Harrison Ford, who did a fantastic job. It is the director of this film. Uh, he gets you immediately. He sets the pacing up immediately. You, I felt as paranoid as Harrison Ford in this movie. I felt like at any moment they were going to find me. Because <laughs> the U.S. Marshals were always... Harrison Ford was always ahead of them, but not by much. Yeah. And they seemed to have leads on things, and they were mobilizing quickly. And I felt paranoid the entire film. They were coming up. They were about to find me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you... And the other thing about this movie and the pacing is we are finding out in real time, as Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones are finding out, who the real killer is. And it, you can feel it from the beginning. So it is It is tense. It is. It, it draws you in. You can't not see what's going on. So any, any takers on that? Like, how do you feel yeah. about that? I, um, I love how, um, I'm one, I'm, gl I'm glad they tell you right away that he's innocent. Like as the audience, like, you know, yeah. that there's a one-armed man. It's pretty not, it, even if it's not instant, you do see him Thanks wrestling. With somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're not spending the movie wondering if he did it like at all, yeah. like, you, you know, but you do, you're, you're still paranoid about the fact that once he does escape through the fact that there's a, you know, the train accident uh, going, you know, with the bus and the whole nine yards, um, you're constantly going, oh no, oh no, you're run, yep. run, like because you know he's innocent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and I do want to comment real quick. I think it's funny, and you need the MacGuffin. You need the fact that you need him to be jailed, or else you wouldn't have a fugitive and it wouldn't have a story. So, um, but I'm going. Okay, so they cleared the freaking uh, apartment in, in a, like a, it seemed like, you know, of course, it was a minute to us, but I'm saying it seemed real quick that they cleared that freaking apartment. Now, then they show the one-armed man that he discusses that he fights with falls mm. down the stairs. Yeah. I'm willing to gamble. His head, who hit the stairs, yeah. left some hair yeah. and skin oh. <laughs> right sure. so yeah. i'm just saying even if he had gloves or whatever like it, the guy had it, it's not like he was in a doctor's outfit he had a like, lot of know, hair like he did have a lot right. of hair right so yeah. like what yeah. i'm saying is they cleared the entire uh crime scene book them you know like it was like yeah. oh, crap. this poor bastard he's already in trouble like and my favorite is low rent wilford brimley sure <laughs> you oh, know the guy that guy the chicago no. guy yeah yeah it's like so yeah. where's this one-armed man? Yeah. Just, I mean, we, we, we'd like to find him, but like you know, you won't. Yeah, you're you're telling us about him. It's like, holy crap, guy! You don't even semi, but like you're. Like you're I know that the the spouse is like the first suspect, but sure, you know, could you humor him a little? Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we saw no traces uh, of a one-armed man. I mean, uh, I, I think look like? <laughs> I think Chicago, the city of Chicago, is a character in this movie. <laughs> um, just the vibe, the city itself. They 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 zone in on very specific landmarks in in Chicago. There's so many Chicago accents in this movie; it cannot be avoided. But um, and and blue, Chicago is kind of a blue collar town, so maybe what they're saying in Chicago, the police department. I mean, we saw it in uh, the Untouchables. Yeah, they're they're trying to say that maybe not the greatest police department again no shade i don't know i'm just saying what the movie is saying i don't know any nothing against chicago, chicago pd all i'm saying is that maybe they're saying they're not the greatest ever they're not the greatest investigators ever or maybe they're setting up the fact that chicago you know the guy in the sausage and uh you know that sort of thing there um daubers the maybe they're setting up that the blue collar is finally getting to nab the white collar guy Maybe they've just been waiting to get a guy that mm. they can throw the book at because they are. Oh, he makes all that money. And maybe mm. we can. Again, I'm no shade against that, but maybe that's what they're trying to do. I don't know if you agree with me. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, can I just say that the, in, um, the way that, again, they book him right away. He's, he's, in, he's at trial a year later, two minutes in. Yeah. Right, which I forget. They talk about how they. It's been a year since we saw you, Richard. I'm like, I wasn't it like last week. What are you talking about? Right, yeah. yeah. But it's he's so been quick. in lockup and he's been waiting. And they whatever. don't waste your time with that. Yeah, they don't, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what I really, really like about the movie at the beginning 
is that, and I've been in the same situation when you're under high stress and someone's asking you questions about what could have happened. And you're, while you're listening to them asking the question, you're trying to piece together what happened in your head. So he's being questioned and he's trying to relive the evening, mm-hmm. but it's coming in and fits and starts like a little Especially, bit here, a little bit here, a little yeah. bit here. Yeah. And I know I've been through that. Like you're trying to piece together, like, wait, wait a minute, what actually happened? Like, are they, are they trying to like, tell me what happened or did, did that happen? You're running it, trying to run it through in your mind, but it's a good way to inform the audience is what happened, but they're doing it in terms of the, the unreliable narrator because he's, under distress so you mm-hmm. we well, can't necessarily trust what he's seeing either right maybe you can remember bits and pieces later on anyway yeah, yeah no, like, it kind of comes, what, if, yep. if people think you're lying when you're like well why didn't you mention that before you like i literally forgot about it like yeah. you're you can be under stress and you can later on say oh my god and then they, then they did this or they said this or they whatever mm-hmm. like you're gonna remember oh god, things yeah. later on especially when you feel cornered mm-hmm. sure yeah because you're, you're um, trying to and, and then you're you're trying to tell you you're trying to tell the truth and then you go wait is that you actually tell yourself is that the truth i'm not sure yeah oh wait yeah is, is that am i making that up i don't know yeah and then if you're under enough stress so mm-hmm. yeah it's i think they they nailed that perfectly and then poor richard just Good. takes it on so you were talking about chicago though yeah, chicago. Um, have you ever have you ever driven through illinois i have not no. flat no. as a pancake really oh. flat 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 and what's joke what's funny about that is like he's like going through all these hills Mm -hmm. and and woods that's loaded with almost mountainous but because it's north carolina (laughs) right right but wait a minute all right i was gonna ask about that but they they are bringing him to jail and the train that hits the bus is the southern illinois down by kentucky because illinois i'm just saying saying that area though i've driven through and it's like like, southern illinois I don't know about Southern. I don't know. Well, I was going. That's I was going. Where the Missouri. accident was. I, is it near? Well, that's near Missouri, right? Southern Illinois. Missouri, Kentucky. Yeah. It's down oh, right, no, that so, way. Yeah. So I was right there. Yeah. Flat. Okay, all right. I don't. I, as a I'm table. Not... No, all right. Well, <laughs> like, and it's so flat. You go, wow, this is so interesting. And then you go, done. I didn't realize how much I missed hills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like within minutes, you go. Yeah, Holy I love I love hills and trees. I couldn't listen where there was super flat like that. I don't like that. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like how it looks. I don't even like how a house sits on a lot that's just super flat. It needs to have a little bit of something. I mean, guys, you can't guys, even comprehend how flat it is until you're driving through it. It's like I, yeah. oh. you, you know how when you drive into New Hampshire and you're like you finally see the mountains when you get to the north. Yeah. And it's really pretty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I went to West Virginia. It's four and a half hours of mountains. It's four and a half hours of New Hampshire. I swear to Christ, it is. Yeah. It's just mountain after mountain after. It's crazy. Mountain yeah. Mama. mountains, West Virginia. It's gorgeous. I'm Country telling you. Yeah, my um, my husband's uh, <laughs> my husband's um, father's family is from there, and uh, they they. Uh, it's one little weird story, but his his grandmother unfortunately passed away, and when he had to go there for her. They re- they had a plot or something like a family a family cemetery, mm-hmm. and he described it to me as being up a mountain. Yep. And he said basically it was like this skinny skinny little road that went up this mountain. And like mm-hmm. I think one of his aunts got so freaked out, and I would have too, because it just looks like it was raining and muddy. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm gonna get out and just walk because she couldn't stand the thought of like it looked like the car was just gonna go right over the thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they had to like when they finally got up to the top. Then they had to carry the casket up all over. It was all just like, a, it was a mountain. Like Capital of West Virginia has 48,000 people. Washington, D.C. has 781,000 people. Wow. Wow. There yeah. You go. Anyhow. All right. So moving it's on. Nice, Look. It's not yeah, no, I just had to point that out. I just thought it was kind of funny. Though, like the yeah. vast hills of Illinois. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. And what they get at at the beginning here and why they have a side with Richard already is that obviously he has been wronged. He's not taking it out on anybody. He's kind of almost biding his time. Like eventually the, he knows the innocent, even though he might have to work hard, um, the innocent should prevail. And that's who doesn't resist arrest. He doesn't whine about it. He's just basically, well, and by the way, what life does he have left anyway? His wife's been mm. murdered. The wet's the way he figure it because they established oh, early on that, that, it, that that's his whole life, right? That's Let's, the only, you know what I mean? We, so what? The 911 call. Yeah. How awful is that to hear? Oh, Richard? I hated that. 
Mm -hmm. trying to kill me like but she's like misconflating everything like she's just like you know she's she's, she had she was hitting the damn head so you're asking her like you know like you're saying well that's 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 her just saying that he's trying to kill her (laughs) exactly i hated that and i was always like so upset about that i'm like she's basically she probably even heard him come home so she's like richard richard or she's just calling her husband he's trying to kill me he's trying to kill Mm -hmm. me like she's trying to talk to him you know, in her head, no, and like the, the course of nine one one says, it's Richard. He's trying to kill me. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Melanie. Yeah. I shot. I shot the clerk. What? I I shot the clerk. Oh yes, exactly. I <laughs> love that part. Oh my god. Yeah, I love that. Wait, I'm in the middle of a damn confession here. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. But let's look at this yeah, way. The act. The actor who plays Mrs. Kimball does a super job. Yeah. At that. Well, I'm Lord. saying things. The neurons are firing, but they're not really firing right it's almost on reflex so so good for her um so richard gets out you know so we're not going to go through all of the the minutiae here but uh he becomes a fugitive by luck basically and then yeah. doing so proves that he is a good man he yeah. helps people uh when saves he could the boy's have, life in the hospital yep saves the boy's life in the hospital saves yeah. one of the inmates on the on the train uh mm-hmm. even though the cops were like what does he say uh screw you i'm out of here is that Am I paraphrasing? When, I the, when when the bus is tipped over and the trains about oh, yeah. to hit it, <clears throat> you're on your own. I think you're on. Your, yeah, kiss my ass. You're on your own or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So we know he's a good man. We also established from um, the friend of his, the the doctor Nichols, um, that he is smarter than everybody that you know, and he proceeds to prove it throughout the course of the movie. Here, and here's the thing. So I I believe that he is as smart as he pretends to, as as Harrison Ford is showing that he is. I believe he is a fantastic problem solver. I believe that he's not only just a good doctor, but he's a very smart person. And if he has to figure out a way to do something, he will figure out how to do it. And in doing so, once he has evaded the police, and, and he's he almost gets caught four or five times and he always gets out, mm-hmm. eventually he's going to try to find his killer. And he figures out how, what he needs to do, and he will not stop until he finds that person. But to me, like that—that that proves. I, I would think that would prove to everybody that he really is innocent because he could have fled, he could have got away. He's mm-hmm. not. He's just basically like the other guy was saying that he's sticking around. Why would he stick around? Why would he go into this hospital where everybody knows who he is? Why would he, with all these cops crawling around, everybody's looking for him? Why would he do this? Like that should prove and i think that's why tommy lee jones sort of kind of believe in him because like yeah. why in the world would somebody do that when they could get away if he was guilty he's he's literally trying to solve a murder right you know and, and, and that's the bit with tommy lee jones which we have to now go to tommy lee jones real quick is because tommy lee jones has a job and his job and he says it on the phone and he says it in the waterfall mm-hmm. when ford's got the gun on him and he says i didn't kill my wife and his response is i don't care yeah and at the time we don't know why he says I don't care. And then we figure out Tommy Lee Jones's job is to bring Richard Kimball in. Yeah. It's not to figure, not to be a detective. Not, not to, to judge. His job is to get, he has a collar. He has to get that. And he does not toy around. <laughs> he, that's why he's the best at what he does. That's why when he says to the, the, the rookie and he almost shoots him in the head and he says, I don't bargain. Right. And yeah. that's it. And yeah. it's not that he doesn't, my wife and I say it all the, all the time. It's not that I don't care, but I don't care. I have a job to do. I get where you're coming from, but I have a job to do. And the fact that Kimball goes all the way back from Southern Illinois to Chicago across the state yeah. to get back to a place where someone's going to catch him. So either at the hospital where he used to work, at the hospital where, he's, where he um, uh, got his own medical assistance, or... Um, you know, in all the places he used to hang out, someone's going to get him, but he's got to go. And that's what makes the U.S. Marshals say, then what's going on here? Why would he come back? I mean, yeah, we have to get the guy, but why would he come back here? And to yeah. me, that is a beautiful bit of storytelling because it forces Tommy Lee Jones to go beyond his job. It, mm-hmm. it's, it forces Tommy Lee Jones to say, I'm going to do my job, but what is just here? Yeah. Shouldn't I be serving justice? He doesn't say it, Yeah. but he's going to do it. Because it only it all adds up. Right, so, you can anyway, see it on his face. To say about that. You can see it on his face, like you know, as time goes on, he's like looking at stuff, and you know, it's not he's not he's not just sticking to the I am, you know, I have to just bring him in. And that's it. 
Like, yeah. because he's picking up on all these little things, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not like O.J. Simpson playing golf. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for the real killer. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the, I, I think the best part of that is he will he pulls a Columbo without doing Columbo. You know Columbo. I mean, yeah, yeah. he would. Yeah, he yeah, knows yeah. he knows who he's got to get. Yeah. And the way that he makes them nervous is by saying one more question, ma'am. One more question. He plays with. <laughs> yeah, them, yeah, right? yeah. And Tommy Lee Jones doesn't do that, but the Tommy Lee Jones's Columbo move in this is to smile and say thank you. Mm-hmm. When he goes, sure, take your time, we're yeah. fine. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. All right, thank you. And but yeah. whenever he's pleasant, you know he's pissed off. Yeah. Until eventually, when he says, um, "I think the thing he hates most is being lied to to his face." Yeah. He says, you know, whatever. Somebody, something. Doctor Nichols lied to me. Go get him. That's it. Like all the gloves are off now. Somebody lied to my face while I'm trying to do my job. You must, we are going to get him right now. And that's it. And I appreciate that. I respect that. He, he, I, he's not, he's not fucking around, and, and, but not in a brutal way, but in a, I have a job to do and you're getting in a way of my job, which I do really well. You don't understand who you're playing with. Yeah. And, and so anyway, sorry. The thing that I love about Tommy Lee Jones in this movie is, I, pretty much every single word that comes out of his mouth and how he says it mm-hmm. every yep. single word and yep. and like his expression his facial expressions like literally everything like i'm totally in love with him when i'm watching this movie I, uh, this is the fact that he is such a serious person and you know that he's going to get his job done but at the same time everything that comes out of his mouth is super sarcastic and, and funny mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> um this is literally everything like i, I mean my god yeah he goes he goes, what are you doing? He goes, I'm thinking. Well, think me of a cup of coffee and a chocolate donut with some of those little sprinkles on top. Uh, will you? As long as you're thinking. Like, literally everything. He's he's always such he's such a shit. Like, yeah. In a way. Because, but he's so smart. And I don't know. I, I, just, mean, I just love how about, how about, that boy just did a Peter Pan right off yeah. the, when, when uh, he jumps yeah. off the, the, you know, off the waterfall. I mean. Yeah. I, I think I think they they have his demeanor. He's got a high voice. He's got a southern voice. So you don't equate that with being an analytical genius, yeah. but he kind of is. And yeah. I'm not throwing shade on anybody with a southern accent. I'm just saying, like, how can someone that has that sounds so pleasant be so hard as nails? And that's right. exactly what it is. And I want to bring up something that you said, Melanie, because everything he says is so funny and so jokey. Mm-hmm. He is he's playing the same vibe as K from Men in Black, but in K yeah. he makes no jokes. Yeah. He is serious all the time and it's hysterical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in this movie he actually makes jokes yeah. and it's hysterical. And originally when he did K, he wanted to yeah. be more like Yeah. like US Marshal uh, yeah. Gerard. I had that the, trivia. Yeah, and the director said yeah. no. No, just the, the humor it's is going to be when work. you play, yeah. play it straight. And he plays like, yeah. oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Because Will Smith right. had to be the funny one. Well, in it. Yeah. What's yeah. genius about him in this movie is, is the cadence. Sure. I think, I think that's mm-hmm. everything. Everything's like, boom, 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 boom. It's like, he does it in such a speedy manner that <laughs> that's like, like, oh man, this is, this is a joy. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, you know, the worst we were looking for is Doc. Richard Campbell. Like, it's just like everything yeah. is just like, you know, like, um, like, oh God, I love like that the part. guy's fish food. And he's like, well, yeah. Yeah, grab a couple of poles, catch the fish that ate them. Yeah. I need proof. Yeah. And no, I know I'm not doing a great impression. I'm just saying that's yeah. the yeah, yeah, yeah. that like, you know, it's that, that vibe. And you're like, oh man, I love listening to everything this guy says. Yeah. Can I, can I, I say, he says. he's, he's, he's so good. And like I said, you can't, you can't not watch him and you can't not get drawn in by him because oh. he's so let me add to that man he's ripping you apart but you don't even know it Love and you. he's so comfortable to listen to but he's kind of he's trying to get you it's 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 nuts let me add to um, that um um with with what we were just talking about the director did such a great job and writing uh you know like mm-hmm. everybody did uh, and his acting did a great job because he could be easily a somebody who you don't like, like because sure. you love Richard, right? Yeah. 
You're yeah. running. You want Richard to be safe, mm -hmm. but he still makes you like him. Yeah. As he's chasing Richard. Yeah. You know, right. like you're not picking sides all like straight up. You don't yeah. want him to catch Richard. Yeah. <laughs> but right. you also yeah. love him at the same time. And, and that's like, true. That's very difficult to pull off. And they yeah. it off. It's true because a lot of times you like literally just hate the other person and you don't hate Right. Him you're like, like, screw you, man. Don't catch him. <laughs> I hate yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I also yeah. loved how uh, Harrison Ford played the role and how desperate you can see on his face he's becoming. He did a really good job. And then I love it at the end. I mean, he just looks like he's just he's just had it running and, and mm -hmm. running and running and doing all this. And at the very end when he was like, he goes, they killed my wife. And he goes, I know it, Richard, but it's over. And then he goes, you know, I'm glad I need the rest. But it just mm -hmm. at that point when he first said that, when he was like, they killed my wife. And he goes, I know it, but it's over. At that one point, you didn't know, he didn't know that he wasn't going to be arrested again. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that he, that he wasn't going to get in trouble for all this. Like, even though he said, I, they killed my wife, he didn't know that it went, it's just the way that Tommy Lee Jones said it. Like, I know it, Richard, but it's over. Like, it's almost like he was going to say, I know it, but it's, there's nothing we can do about it. Or like, you know, we, we can't prove it or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, you didn't know where that was going to go at that one moment. Right. I think for just like a second, you didn't know. Um, and I don't, and you can see in his, his voice, his face, he didn't know either. He thought it was over. This is it. It's over. He's caught. We've caught you. It's over. It's just over, Richard. This mm -hmm. is it. You know, and then um, he just looks so desperate and so sad. And I think mm -hmm. he had just had it. He was just going to give himself up. And then he puts the well, handcuffs on him and then he takes the handcuffs off him and the, gets him a bag of ice at the end. I thought that was nice. Yeah, I thought mm -hmm. you didn't care. Don't, yeah. you know, I yeah, don't, don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Um, and the laugh. The laugh makes yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. He's he's finally allowed to kind of be himself a little bit, and, and yeah. it's almost like saying it's nothing personal. I'm just doing my job. Yeah. And even if he were guilty, he would. I, I'm pretty sure Tammy Lee Jones would say it's nothing personal. I'm just doing my job. What Tommy Lee Jones hates is being lied to to his face. Right. It's almost like he'd accept the fact that this guy was running and he finally got him because it's his <laughs> job. He just does. Yeah. He does his job. So we got to suspend the window of disbelief here a little bit on a couple of things. But before I talk about that, I just want to say, you know, I kept saying it at the end. There's nothing more action packed than two old white guys punching each other. Like that's so we always equate this as an action movie and suspenseful. It's just two old white, two old farts just beating each other up on a rooftop at the end. It's like, I'm most expecting like, you know, back in the day now, like uh, John Wick is Keanu Reeves is like 50 plus and he's doing gung fu and yeah. he's doing all this shit. And here you just have two guys, two old guys just roundhousing each other with yeah. like pipes and shit. Swinging and it's bags. exciting. Yeah. Wait, I'm like, he's at the boss level. Yeah. No, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. He's got to, he's got to dodge a fireball. Uh, he's got to look out for the slippery slopes. He got to look at this, this bag swinging back and forth. And Joey uh, so Pants thought... has to have a freaking entire girder or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. you call it. Oh like, yeah, oh god, right. he got that just in rammed face. right into his face. Right in his face. <laughs> um, but I gotta say, the only the, the only thing about this movie is a couple of things that it's pretty tough. I know that security in 1994 in a hospital is not like it is now. And I know that back in the day, you could just kind of walk in. But I don't know that even if I were on custodial staff, I don't know that I could walk into the research facility of a probably multi-million dollar orthopedic um, prosthetic limb lab. The lab, even better. a research lab. Even like, better. He took an entire tour around <laughs> mm -hmm. when he was just wearing a hoodie. Like, yep. I mean, like he was he wasn't even in the outfit yeah. yet he, he, just walked, he went yep. in walked all around not a single person looked yep. at him <laughs> no, like, oh no he's supposed to be there so that happened a lot and uh i thought that harrison ford even though you have to suspend your window of disbelief on that i thought harrison ford did a very good job knowing that if anyone notices me right now i'm screwed but keeping his shit together yeah there were so many instances where if that person turns their head a little bit, I'm caught, and he just kind of keeps walking like a normal person. Yeah, it's that or old even adage. The cop. Remember the cop when he's in the yeah. hospital, and he's got mm -hmm. the, the food and the coffee and everything, and he's yep. like, he's describing exactly what he looks like. He's like, you see anybody like that? He's like, uh, yeah. Every time I look in the mirror, except for the beard. Yeah, but <laughs> like, so he, and the cop's like, okay, whatever, you know, and he just walks away. Hello, he's right there. <laughs> like, oh my god, the stress. But yeah. I, the only thing I will call shenanigans on, so all of that stuff, fine. Like, not a lot of security. They'll let him walk around a hospital for no reason, just as a yeah. stranger. 
But when he goes to the Cook County courthouse to see the person that he thinks is the one-armed man, and he gives his ID, and the cop takes the ID information and has their thumb over his over the picture on the ID, so they never face check the ID with him. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what? Come on! Like, I know that Richard is desperate at this point, and he's gonna try to get to see this guy, and doesn't care if he gets caught anymore. But uh-huh. the cop holds the the basically it's the driver's license from the old man that he met in the first hospital. Like he has his wallet, and he's got his. The cop has his thumb over the picture. The first thing a cop does is look at the pictures and make sure they match up. Like that's such horseshit. I actually kind of felt- you, you need to have that moment. Fine, I'm just saying. I actually kind of felt bad for the inmate. Like, yeah, what? I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I mean, He's you can like, at least hey. talk to me. I mean, you brought me yeah. down here. Oh, boy, yeah. a friend. I love yeah. it. I'll it's talk to anybody. In here. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so, He's like, anyway. Anyway, I can help you out. <laughs> yep. It's time for TMI with Melanie. Listen, listen to this. I am in the bathroom right before the movie starts. Uh huh. And I'm in the stall, and there's no toilet paper. Yeah. And mine are at home TMI. in a display case above TMI, my bed. My yeah. TMI. TMI. TMI, my friends. TMI? To TMI. Too much information. I used to say don't go there, but that's lame. <clears throat> now, here's Melanie with your timeless movie info. All right. Melanie, run for it. Okay, run so. For it. I want to say that we were talking about how well this was directed and how great of a movie this is. Yeah. Once you hear some of this trivia, it's crazy because it was kind of, it just, to me, it looked like it was glued together as they were doing it. Sure. When I read some of the trivia, but it doesn't look like that because it's such a perfect movie all the way around. But okay. anyway, um, I'll tell you some stuff. But the budget was $44 million. It grossed $368.9 million. Wow. Uh, it's huge. Um, the screenplay spent five years in development hell going through nine different writers and 25 drafts. Filming began even before the script was completed. And it, like, look at how well it turned out. It's just crazy. Sure. You know? um, this was the first American movie shown in a Chinese theater in over 40 years. Audiences um, accustomed to local movies were blown away when they saw it and, became, and it became a huge hit there. Um, they had one chance to do the crash train scene um, and to get it right. Because it was mm-hmm. very expensive. <laughs> yeah. And it was rail trains. Mm-hmm. So they consulted an array of engineers, stunt doubles, and insurance companies to predict what would happen. Um, the wreck train and the bus remained a tourist attraction in Dillsboro, North Carolina. That's cool. Um, and I actually went uh, whitewater rafting, um, you know, right where they went into the river. And the, and that's the tour guide was like, that's where you, you know, they said, you guys see the fugitive? It was right there, you know. That's cool. It was cool. That's they have a, they were like a, a mock bus with a guy standing on the top. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, well, it was, I just remembered Fair like, problem. yeah, everything that was over there. And they, they pointed right to where the thing was. Um, okay. So the river was cold. So the crew kept tubs of hot water off camera to keep Harrison Ford, uh, Ford warm. <clears throat> the weather was so cold that the crew film some of the scenes that Tommy Lee Jones recalled that he, the batteries on the cameras kept freezing. That's how freaking cold it was. Wow. Um, Harrison Ford damaged some ligaments in his leg during the... And this is another one where they injure people. And they're like, just keep doing it. Just like, go. Um, yeah, just keep going. It looks good. Go. Um, Harrison Ford damaged some ligaments in his leg during the filming of the scenes in the woods. But he refused to take surgery until the end of the filming so that his character would keep the limp. Wow. Uh, the limp can be seen... Uh, in a scene where Richard Kimball is running. And well, wow. it says any scene after that where he's running. So you can He's always more. an awkward runner anyway. Well, <laughs> and, and by the way, no, he if, was. In you know what, Jones, Jones, he, he runs awkward. Go ahead. In um, one of the new, uh, I think it was, might have been the first um, uh, reboot of Star Wars or whatever, like, you know, the, yeah. the extended sequel there, the uh, seven, eight, and nine, right? I think. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, he got like a door, like a, like a, uh, hydraulic door like landed on his leg and broke it oh my god yeah yeah i remember that yeah wow. so jimmy Stop fallon filming. jimmy fallon handed uh, him a, a doll of uh, of han solo and he goes show us how it happened and he goes smash and he just like oh my god. It on the desk. that's funny that's horrible okay there wasn't enough room for the cameraman to be inside the helicopter with tommy lee jones so he had to be strapped to the outside of the chopper. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. To get oh, no. clean footage of Tommy Lee Jones. Mm. And that's so funny. Anyway, um, 
The scene where Kimball is running through St. Patrick's Day Parade was not scripted. I thought I didn't know this. It says, it was later an addition by Andrew Davis. Davis is a native of the city and really wanted to capture the parade. And so they were granted permission from the mayor's office to film the day of the parade. The entire sequence was shot with a handheld steady cam without rehearsal. Ford and Jones just went out to the crowd and did their thing. Uh, the camera operators running around trying to keep up. Ford observed that since his character was keeping a low profile, uh, it meant for himself he didn't really stand out that much, and it lasted several minutes in the crowd before he was actually recognized by anybody. That's neat. Um, yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Okay, now you mentioned this earlier. Uh, originally, uh, Julianne Moore's character had a bigger role in the film. That's why her name. So it says, oh. after, after she exposes him briefly uh, and saves a little boy's life, Kimball was... He sought after her for some help, and he eventually f fell for her, and they fell in love, I guess. And it says, these scenes were filmed and deleted from the final cut of the film. The reason that her name is still credited as one of the main characters, but the reason why they took it out was because they basically thought, okay, he's running around trying to avenge his wife's death. It doesn't look right that, like, right after that, he's, like, falling in love with somebody. So yeah, I, agree. I agree. I don't, I, I don't silly. like that. It's weird. No. I, I'm glad yeah. they took it out. By the way, real quick, how <laughs> yeah. shocked was everybody? When they saw Jane Lynch, oh yeah, Who? yeah, I saw yeah. Jane Lynch was uh... Jane Lynch. The she's from uh, like uh, oh, Forty Year Old Virgin. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. love her. I love yeah. her. Love her. Um, she's so young. Like, you know, in a and way. she's been in a, another show that I watched with a, a comedian. She's she's super funny. I love her. I was like, oh. but I'm horrible with names, and you know that. Um, <laughs> you gotta subscribe who they are, and then I know who they are. Yeah. Um, all right. So after Kimball says, "I didn't kill my wife." Tommy Lee Jones was originally written to say, this isn't my problem. <laughs> oh. um, at the request of Tommy Lee Jones, thank God, it was changed to I don't care. Um, both Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones improvised many of their scenes. Harrison Ford shadowed doctors at a University of Chicago Medical Center to prepare for his role. He said it allows you to move and act as if you've done things a hundred times before. <clears throat> Apparently, Kimball's apartment is modeled, this is so weird, Kimball's apartment is modeled after an actual doctor that Harrison Ford and Andrew Davis met in a Chicago bar shortly before filming. Ford felt that the doctor was somewhat, somewhat eccentric and reclusive, and it was exactly how he wanted to portray Kimball. So they got permission to go to his house and look at the apartment, which was just so weird. Cause, and, and, and then basically the guy gave him permission <clears throat> to go take pictures of everything. The crew went there and everything. So basically, every single thing from the paintings on the walls to the architecture was duplicated for the movie. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Authenticity. Yep. Yeah. The character of Cosmo Renfro was supposed to die in the finale of the film. However, Joe Pant Pantoliano. Thank you. Joey Pants. Uh, thank you. Successfully lobbied for his character to be spared so that he could appear in the potential sequel. He indeed got to reprise his role of Renfro in the sequel U.S. Marshals in 1998. In fact, he made sure to do extra groaning and leg movements to make sure people knew that his character was still alive. <laughs> no, no, that's true. Either. Question. That's right. Anybody yeah. else see it? Because I never did. What? The what? second US one? Marshals, nah. yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I watched it. I never good. saw it. Numerous times. It's good. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's not, you know, obviously I love this one more, but no, it's it's a good movie. Definitely okay. it's yeah. a good movie. Yeah. You'd like it. I think you'd like it. All right. In fact, we're cool. covering it next week. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here's uh, final judgment, everybody. It's time now for final judgment. Are you ready to rubber stamp this bitch? Here's the final judgment. All right. It's time for final judgment. It's the time where we talk about fact, not opinion, or opinion, not fact. You decide. Yeah. All right. We're going to go with Chris. All right. Hey guys, um, so look, everybody should see this movie. Uh, yeah, it holds up. I think it was kind of groundbreaking for a 90s thriller. It definitely had some different vibes uh, compared to other 90s thrillers. I think, um, I mean, that's all saying it's a good movie. It, it does hold up. Uh, I The only way it doesn't hold up, as I mentioned before, is that you cannot just walk around a hospital anymore. Uh, there's cameras everywhere, the security guards in the front, and it should be, that's better. Um, you shouldn't just be able to walk into a hospital. So many FERPA violations in this movie. Unbelievable. Just information about patients just lying around. So, yeah. and he can't do most of his, uh, mo most of his investigation unless that's available. So I don't know how you fix that movie, but I don't think it matters. 
Yeah. Um, I, I think, um, mm. so I, I, I think it would hold up either way. So, um, yeah, holds up. So um, he's dusting yeah. the blinds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what is that about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll go. I'll go oh, okay. Go, ahead. Ahead. go. Oh, sorry. Okay. Not so good. yeah, hundred percent agree. Um, I don't see how it couldn't hold up. Um, it's still being played on TV constantly. You still have to stop just to watch it. Anybody sits here and watches it, they're not gonna, it's impossible for you not to get sucked into this movie. Mm -hmm. And the acting is phenomenal from yep. every single person in it. And I also, I also like the guy, and I, mean, I, mean, I don't know names, and you could have already mentioned him, but he was in Eddie and the Cruisers. Joey, Joey Pantaleano. Joey is that Pants. who that is? Joey Pants? Joey Pantaleano? Is that, that's him? I don't know. Yeah. I thought we were talking about the curly-haired guy, because he was in, I think, U.S. Marshals, too. Our, there was um... a couple of them that carried on at U.S. Marshals. Okay. Um, so Joey Pants is the guy that gets hit with the steel thing right in the head at the end. Okay, yeah, that's who I'm talking about. I love him. Yeah. Um, but the yeah, there was, an, there was also another guy because I again I don't know names ever. Um, there was another guy. Remember the one that like hurt his ears? Yes. I'm pretty sure Newman. he's also in U.S. Marshals. With the long well. hair. I think, he gets, yeah. I think he gets killed in U.S. Marshals. Oh. Um, so spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's there's a couple a couple characters that went over with Tommy Lee Jones to make the movie. Anyway. Sorry about all that. Um, okay. Going off on a tangent there, but I like right. him. And um, yeah, the, the, the movie is amazing. There's no way somebody's not going to like this. I dare somebody to watch this. I literally dare somebody to watch this movie and say it's, it's not any good. Yeah, I agree. So I agree too. Um, I want to say it holds up. And I say um, today uh, people have no attention span. I'm talking about like you yeah. know, as a group. The whole yeah. entire world seems to be like mm. that's why sitcoms don't have long intros and uh, you know whatever yeah. anymore. Um, it's like da -da 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 -da, I love you, sitcom, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it's like bang right to it. Um, so this movie does not like waste time. It gets right to it, like I said before. Um, and pacing is amazing in this movie. Mm. So like yeah. I think I, I think the little thing that doesn't hold up, you know, like you had talked about. Still good enough because we already can see what what era it's in. So mm -hmm. people are like, oh yeah, they wouldn't do that today. But however, everything else, it's right. just you know, it really just nails it right yep. right from the jump. And the acting's great, everything's great. Um, it this movie was up for best picture, but it had zero chance because yeah. it went against the movie that you and I saw in the theater, Schindler's List. Oh sure, oh, so, no. it, it had yeah. no I chance. I've never seen that. I have not. Great seen movie. That. It's really good. Well, it's 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 not a it's not an easy watch. No, but it's the it's only good. thing I know from that is when I was watching Seinfeld. Seinfeld took his date. They made to out. See that oh was my making god! Out. Remember, and his mom yeah. was all mad. And that's literally I've never seen it. I don't I don't never seen it. It's, it's yeah. a tough watch, but you should see it. Is yeah. it really long? Yes. Yeah, like three hours. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god! Really? It's good though. All right. Well, everybody, um, that's our show, and I'd like to. Uh, Thank uh, you guys for being here with me, and I'm hey. thankful to be finally be back with you guys. Holy know, crap! Right? It's been about a month, it seems. Yeah. Um, even though the people you know get to see me on the uh, Twister episode, but however, um, I'd like to thank Steve Lavoy for his uh, vocal imaging and Draco and the Malfoys for their theme music, and please like and subscribe and take care of all uh, you know all that stuff because we need to get a rhythm with the algorithm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, <laughs> why not? Um, <clears throat> so, listen, movies may not age like fine wine, but we drink it anyway. Bye. Ooh,